This is Tawny with uh, Horse Plus uh, Animal Rescue, formerly known as NorCal at One Rescue. And Tawny's going to tell us a little bit about what their rescue does and how they do it. Well, first of all, I'm just, I'm really happy to see everyone here. Um, you know, there's so many times organizations, they kind of stick to themselves, and I think it's really neat what Jamie's doing here. It's, it's bringing us together, because so much more can get done if we, if we work together. Um, we're known as NorCal Equine Rescue. We were founded in 2003. Um, we recently changed our name to Horse Plus. Um, you know, we, we've, I've gone all over the place. I've gone back to Nebraska to help with of some pretty large horse seizures and um, you know so we kind of outgrew our name they were taking in horses in southern california and stuff and we found that people stopped you know they, they were glad we were helping horses down there but they're like well you know we don't want to donate because you're in northern california so we figured it's time for name change so we outgrew the name and uh, we did move to the county in 2006 um, from snow and the horses just, you know, we get a lot of emaciated horses, they can't handle the snow. Um, this year we did purchase a 20 acre piece of property um, that we're in the process of setting up. And I know it's probably the worst time for fundraising and stuff for getting buildings together, but we're working on it. Um, our organization has grown, it just every year it just continues to grow. Uh, in 2003 when we started, we rescued five horses following year was 34. Uh, the, uh, 2006 was uh, 69 horses. Uh, 2007 it was 234 horses. 2008 was 385 horses. And 2009 was 414. And this year we're at 422. Um, every year there's more and more. And as the economy goes down, there's more and more horses that can't have homes. And one thing with a dog and cat, you know, I mean, a dog and cat can stay with its owner a lot longer than a horse can when they are both forcing foreclosure and, and losing their homes. I mean, the homeless guy, you can see them with their dogs. Horses are the first animal to go because it simply costs so much to feed them. Um, so our placement rate has, um, in 2008, it was 87%. Um, in 2009, um, we also became an open door facility, and you know, along with that, people realized that we would take any horse, even if it was a horse that did need to be humanely euthanized or was experiencing a lot of health issues. We would take, you know, any horse. So that became known. Um, in 2008, we started doing a free monthly euthanasia clinics. We also did them low cost because uh, we found with the economy going down, there was more and more people who weren't able to afford to keep their horses. And we see a lot of horses ending up at auctions. We would want, you know, we wanted some other aspect for horse owners. So we started holding free monthly euthanasia clinics. Every month since then, uh, we've, we've had those clinics and there's always been horses there. And people are extremely grateful to have the, that opportunity when they can't afford to keep their horse anymore. They don't have to take it to a livestock auction. Um, you know, we've had really old, you know, 45-year-old horses in there, and the people are losing their homes, and they don't know what to do with their 45-year-old horse. If we didn't have these clinics, you know, they might be forced to take that horse to an auction and have it end up in slaughter. Um, we also do a uh, low-cost gelding program. It's from February to April. Um, each year, we geld around 25 horses. Um, the cost for somebody to have their horses gelded from zero to two is $25. Uh, three to eight is $50, and nine and up is $75. We cover $125 of the cost. Um, this program is one of the hardest programs for us to get donations for, so I'm hoping maybe I can get some insight from you guys, because I know there seems to be a lot of stay and neuter programs out there, and for horses it's a hard thing to to break the ice for some people. Um, surprisingly, our, our low-cost euthanasia programs are a lot more, a lot more people want to donate to those. And, and 
Personally, I would be like, okay, I'm going to donate to help Yellowstone so that it doesn't end up being that unwanted horse problem, but it's just the way it is. Uh, we are also doing a low-cost microchipping clinic, uh, and our first one will be in January 12th at Look Ahead Veterinary Services. should cost around $35 a horse to have uh, microchipped, and that way if there's another fire like in 2008 or something, if we can get a lot of these animals microchipped, there won't be so much confusion getting the animals to the proper owners um, and a lot more easier keeping track of those animals. Um, we take in around 10,000 phone calls every year. Um, people that are trying to figure out what's going on you know, with their horses and um, asking for help and if we can take those horses. Um, we can't take every horse out there, obviously. We try to help people make decisions on what to do for their horses. Um, most times when somebody calls and says, you know, I have a great riding horse and I can't keep it anymore, I have one month to get rid of it, I ask those people to try to find that horse a home on their own first. Um, it doesn't need to come to the shelter. If they can put a little effort into it, they know that animal way more than any of our staff does when it comes into, or even a dog and cat. They, you know, the owner knows the most about that animal. Um, we do tell them they need to check references. Um, we tell them they should have two personal references they check, a vet and a farrier reference. And most likely, if somebody's concerned about their horse, they're going to do that. And if it, they do have somebody that's there to pick up horses to send to Mexico or something, they're not going to want to get a horse from an owner that wants references and everything. So um, we tell people to come to us as a last ditch effort. Um, you know, because we can get so full so quickly. And so we do end up, you know, along with that, we do end up with, you know, most of the horses that nobody wants. Um, as far as the yearly operating funds, uh, we so far rely entirely on private donations, um, just people donating to our events or, you know, rescues that come in. In 2008, um, our yearly operating budget was 285000 2009 was 214,000, and 2010 was so far is 150,000. So as the economy goes down, you can see it's dropped quite a bit. Um, but we've even rescued more animals, so it's, it's really tough. Um, thankfully, we've had some people who were getting paid in 2009 that now other people have stepped in to start volunteering for those positions. So that really helps. Um, we have around 10 volunteers at pretty much any time I call them day or night and know they're going to be there. Um, we have around 80 that we can call on if we need them and know they're going to be there as soon as they get their job squared away pretty much. <laughs> um, volunteers are hard to get for our organization because, and I imagine for you guys too, because especially for horses, you can't have somebody come and say, oh, I want to walk the horse, I want to walk the horse, and the horse is 15 hands. Stuck in an office building 
all day, and I read about you going to the vet and then driving back, and I feel like I'm there with you. So you almost make a relationship with people you've never met before that fall in love with your organization because they see what you do on a daily basis. And when you need help, those people will be there for you. Um, you know, invite the media to whatever you're doing with. You know, if you're doing a microchipping clinic, tell the media. If you're doing a spay neuter clinic, tell the media. Um, you know, they're going to get out there in newspapers, they're going to get out there in the TV stations. People are going to watch it. Oh, wow, look what that organization is doing. Um, if you're ever somewhere and see a TV interview man wanting to interview somebody and nobody's stepping up, step up. <laughs> you know, get in there. The more the public can see you, the more recognized you become. Um, and as far as, you know, what we can do for you guys, anytime there's a horse problem, you're welcome to call us. Um, we do have, um, you know, some big trailers we've helped with fire evacuations before. Um, and you know, one thing, you know, we'd be more than happy to help with, I know it's kind of horse and dog, so it's kind of different, but we do have some really large horse trailers, and if there was ever a puppy mill situation happening, we could put a lot of crates in those horse trailers. So just that in mind. Um, and I know in the animal welfare business, shall we say, it, it's really hard to, to get out there and make everyone happy. And I kind of found out you can't. <laughs> you know, you can't make everyone happy. There's people out there that end up, you know, their dog got taken away, or it didn't, you know, that made the enemy. And somebody else adopted that dog and loved you to death. And, you know, you did an adoption application, you found out they've got a huge record with animal control, and you deny them. And then they think that, you know, they're unfit to do anything now. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard to make everyone happy. The best thing you can do is just follow what you know is right. And, you know, every day just get that day done and just keep moving on what you know is right. And, um, you know, when somebody, somebody just one told me, you know, if there's not,